that fizz you see from hydrogen peroxide is actually your skin cells crying for help, saying, ah, stop pouring more on me. Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching the videos, coming out with long form videos every Saturday. Appreciate you all tuning in, having a great time on the channel, making skincare videos, especially the reviews and the compares. But today we're gonna to talk about wound care and ways to treat your cuts and wounds to minimize scarring. This is a very popular question in clinic. And also I posted a video online recently on hydrogen peroxide and it triggered a lot of people. A lot of people got upset saying, I'm a fake doctor. They call me Dr. Evil and other names. And it wasn't very nice, but you know what? I'm gonna keep talking about wound care because we realized down the road that mom and grandma were wrong and we're making all of these mistakes when it comes to wound care. And that's why we're just covered in scars. Not to say that, you know, we could have prevented every scrape from becoming a scar, because it does matter on depth if there was infections, but depth is important because if you're going down deep into the dermis, the second layer of skin, you're gonna have a scar that can become permanent. Yes, time will help fade it, but a lot of scars will be permanent, especially if it's involving that deeper dermis and not just the first layer of skin, the epidermis. So let's talk about wound care mistakes that we're all making. Number one thing we're doing wrong is that we're cleaning our cuts wrong. We should just be using gentle soap and water. You don't have to overcomplicate things. Don't pour hydrogen peroxide or rubbing alcohol on your cuts because you know what? Those are toxic to our keratinocytes or our skin cells and it delays wound healing. That fizz you see from hydrogen peroxide is actually your skin cells crying for help saying, ah, stop pouring more on me. And I have patients who are doing it every day and delaying the wound healing to the point where they had a chronic ulcer on their leg. And yes, legs take longer to heal, but they never heal if you keep pouring hydrogen peroxide on them. Same thing for rubbing alcohol, very toxic to our skin cells, prevents the good epithelial cells from coming in to heal your wound. So just regular soap and water. If you have sterile saline, go ahead and use that. If you have hypochlorous acid, not hypochloric acid, hypochlorous acid actually has been shown in studies to help with wound healing, not harm your keratinocytes and be antimicrobial. So you can do that. I like to use actives spray, their gel, all nice forms that you can use on your kiddos or yourself. Hypochlorous acid is really taken off and the studies behind it really support it but don't use hypochloric acid, hypochlorous. Next is we are drying out our cuts. Our scraped knee fell off the skateboard. Grandma said, just air it out, let that scab form. We actually don't want that. Studies have shown that if you keep your cuts and scrapes moist under a bandage with say petrolatum, you actually will heal much faster. You'll bring in new epithelial cells much faster. Re-epithelialization is a very special moment where you you're having inflammation first, where you're having macrophages coming in and eating up all the dead cells. You have white blood cells, you have dead white blood cells manifesting as pus. And so you have a lot of stuff going on and you have redness at the border, but you need inflammation to start the healing process. But as we heal and bring in new blood vessels and new skin, we actually need a moist environment to speed that up. And I like petrolatum, so Vaseline, Aquaphor, Cetaphil healing ointment or CeraVe healing ointment, all great options for healing a wound. Some patients have asked for prescription medications for biopsy sites in areas that are prone for infection, say the hands, the legs. We will talk about that in clinic and there's a particular antibiotic ointment called Mepiracin that is nice because it's like petrolatum ointment but it's antimicrobial. Someone on my uh, Instagram the other day asked what's a nice natural option, Medi Honey or honey based products have been quite popular and we used to use that in the hospital for people with ulcers on the lower extremity to help prevent infections. Honey is actually antimicrobial. So it'll fight off the bacteria, some fungus. And so that's another option if you wanna use that. Apply it over your wound. I always say a generous amount because you don't want it drying out the overlying bandage and having it stick to your wound and cause you know trauma when you take off the bandage. So put a nice cream cheese layer of 
Vaseline or some kind of petrolatum and then put your bandage and tape it down with some paper tape or use a band-aid But when you have that moist environment, you're gonna have much faster healing and much faster healing is less scarring Next is a big one using antibiotic ointment. That's over-the-counter bacitracin neosporin neosporin has neomycin and bacitracin and both of those are common allergens that have commonly caused contact dermatitis in my patients, allergic contact dermatitis specifically. And when I have a patient coming in with a rash that looks like an outside job, I mean, looks like something got on their skin, causing a geometric rash or a linear rash like poison ivy, I'm gonna ask them certain things like, have you been using Neosporin or Bacitracin, triple antibiotic? A lot of times patients will say, yes, how did you know? It's just a very commonly seen thing in my clinic. And you know, in Europe, they don't have over-the-counter antibiotic ointments. In the US we do, and we overuse it. And so not only are we getting resistance, say with like our antifungal creams, like Lotrimin, generic-wise, Clotrimazole, though we're seeing more fungi getting resistance to those over-the-counter treatments because we're overusing them, but we're also getting allergic rashes to say these antibiotic ointments. And so I've seen patients come in with really bad, severe redness, blistering, and it actually can turn from itchy to painful where it mimics a skin infection. And I've seen patients who saw infectious disease for many months for a mysterious rash or mysterious infection that wouldn't go away with all the antibiotics. They kept adding more antibiotics. They put in a pick line into the arm to give IV antibiotics. Infectious disease doctor just scratching their head like, what's going on? We're throwing the kitchen sink at the patient. And why is the uh, redness spreading? And it's actually because they're using Neosporin. And so dermatologists really dislike Neosporin because we're wasting so much healthcare dollars in the misdiagnosis of these things. Well, first of all, we're having patients coming in with these rashes because they're using Neosporin. Then they're getting misdiagnosed by, you know, our doctors who are working very hard in the emergent care, the emergency rooms. They're not aware that uh, Neosporin should be on their watch list and patients are using them and they're gonna just not recognize that these are allergic contact dermatitis rashes and they're just gonna throw antibiotics at them. Then they see infectious disease and the healthcare dollars rack up. And so dermatologists, we actually do save a lot of healthcare dollars by coming up with the right diagnosis and a quick treatment because that rash can go away quite quickly once we stop the culprit antibiotic ointment and then we get them on some topical anti-inflammatory treatments. Next, we're not taking care of our scars after they're well healed. While they're healing, we talked about petrolatum, but once it's well healed, what can we do to minimize scarring further? The sun and scars are not friends. Scars will not do well if they're exposed to sunlight and you're not protecting it with sunscreen. And so sunscreen SPF 30 and above, I love it. Keep that going all year round over your scars, especially on the face. I like Cicoplast Balm on scars because it has maticasoside and that's a Centella Asiatica based ingredient that will help with wound healing and actually scars. And some studies have shown that it helps with stretch marks too. It's a great, nice, soothing, moisturizing ingredient for your scars, especially in areas of rubbing. So if you have it on your shoulders, your chest, and you wanna moisturize the scar so it's not getting roughed up by your clothing. If you're going on a long hike, you wanna moisturize your scar. But if the scar is, say, in a sun-exposed area, you might want to go with the Cicoplast Balm UV. This is SPF 50, and this is great because you have like a two-in-one. You have the scar treatment, moisturizing, plus you have the sun protection in it. So consider any SPF 30 and above. If you like Cicoplast, you can check out their Cicoplast UV. Another thing that is evidence-based is silicone. I want to backtrack a little bit because a lot of patients come in with midderma or vitamin E oil and they're trying that out. But you know what? Those actually have really poor evidence behind them. They don't have concrete evidence supporting them actually helping with scars or even, you know, we talked about stretch marks. Silicone sheets or silicone gel, this is a brand I've been using, Scarway, and my patients like to use. They actually have evidence that support that it helps with the appearance of scars over time. I like the gel if it's not in an area of uh, rubbing, but say if it is an area of rubbing with clothing, I would say get a silicone sheet, trim it to size and slap that on once a day, just so it protects it because rubbing itself can cause hypertrophic scar formation and even keloidal scarring to form. And keloids are a tough process to treat. It's a tough condition because it's pretty much a tumor that's kind of going out of control. It's expanding outside the site of injury 
And so it's going to crab claw outwards and make little fingers. It can go upwards. If it's on the ear, it can become a really large hanging tumor on the ear and weigh the, the earlobe down. And so what we do is treat it with injections of steroid, we call Kenalog. We can even do liquid nitrogen. We can do liquid nitrogen with the injections of Kenalog. And then in advanced cases, we actually will inject chemotherapy into these keloids and also consider radiation therapy with the radiation oncologist. So this comes to my next mistake that I see people do is that they just wait too long. They don't take that earring out that's causing the keloid on the ear. They're not seeking help when the keloid is small because once that keloid really takes off, it's gonna be hard to really shrink it down. We can, it's much easier when the keloid's firm and itchy and small. We can take care of the itching, we can take care of the firmness with a simple injection, but once the diameter starts to expand, it gets really hard. And sometimes you have to excise the scar out, but once you excise it, you're at risk for getting another keloid, so not ideal. Scar massage, I'm okay with once the scar is matured and you're pretty far out from your injury, like a month out from your injury, you can start gently massaging. But I would actually use a moisturizer with it. If you wanted to do a retinol body lotion with it, because retinol is a vitamin A derivative, that can help with scarring. If you wanted to use Naturiums, Cococine, or Versed retinol body lotions, you can use that. If you have acne scarring on your face, you talk to your dermatologist about prescription retinoids like tretinoin, tazeratine, that can help with the skin turnover and helping increase collagen production. If you want to just use an over-the-counter product for like minor scars, you can actually just do retinol. Adapalene might have some evidence that it helps with scarring, but we need to have more studies on that. But retinol could help. I like the Alpha Ret by Skin Better Science. That's a nice retinoid to consider and seeing your dermatologist for chemical peels in addition to that outside of summer. So before or after summer, consider chemical peels to also help with scarring, whether it's the discoloration or if you wanna help with collagen production, talk to your dermatologist about that, okay? So I hope this video was helpful and sorry if I kind of triggered some people saying mom and grandma were wrong. Now you know what to do. Share with your friends who are getting banged up and getting cuts and scrapes all the time. You wanna teach them the right way. Please hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace.